Let's assume a child doesn't like her grandmother. So she invents a time machine and goes back in time to when her grandmother was young and stabs her in the back. Since her grandmother has been stabbed she dies due to the flesh wound. And since she died while she was young and unmarried. It means that the child parents were never born and so child wasn't born as well. And thus here comes the paradox that since the grandmother is already dead due to the flesh wound and the child was never born then. Who killed her grandmother? A paradox is something which sounds true but in the end ends up contradicting itself. Well, coming to the next fascinating paradox. Can you answer truthfully that the next word you say is no? Well if you say, yes then it means that you wanted to answer truthfully to the question but ended up answering wrong. And if you say, no, then you didn't wanted to answer truthfully but ended up answering. It is same as the crocodile stole the child paradox. The premise states that a crocodile, who has stolen a child, promises the father, mother that the child will be returned if and only if they correctly predict what the crocodile will do next. The transaction is logically smooth but unpredictable if the parent guesses that the child will be returned, but a dilemma arises for the crocodile if the parent guesses that the child will not be returned. In the case that the crocodile decides to keep the child, he violates his terms, the parent's prediction has been validated, and the child should be returned. However, in the case that the crocodile decides to give back the child, he still violates his terms, even if this decision is based on the previous result, the parent's prediction has been falsified, and the child should not be returned. The question of what the crocodile should do is therefore paradoxical, and there is no justifiable solution. Derek Parfit's question on personal identity. Parfit asks the reader to imagine entering a teletransporter, a machine that puts you to sleep, then destroys you, breaking you down into atoms, copying the information and relaying it to Mars at the speed of light. On Mars, another machine recreates you, from local stores of carbon, hydrogen, and so on, each atom in exactly the same relative position. Parfit poses the question of whether or not the teletransporter is a method of travel, is the person on Mars the same person as the person who entered the teletransporter on Earth? Although he has the, the same memory and same past, would you choose this teletransporter to go to another galaxy much more fascinating than ours?